lies All you see is for you and I In your dreams, through the nights Every moment that passes by Look to the heavens, hands spread wide Thanking Allah the Most High There is no God but Allah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear viewers, I would like to welcome you to another episode of iTeens World where we will be discussing another topic regarding the leadership development of youth and I would like to also emphasize that this program is to facilitate the learning so that we can take these skills, make ourselves better and understand and then apply those skills into becoming better leaders of tomorrow. Um, this topic today is a very important topic. It talks about emotional self-control. And I would also like to welcome our guests, young guests that are part of the program that will involve in this discussion. We'll start with... Uh, yeah, my name is Abdul Mateen uh, Yusuf. I'm from um, India and I'm 17 years old and uh, I'm in year 12. MashaAllah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, my name is Atiq Rahman, and I'm 18 years of age, and I'm in year 13. MashaAllah, welcome, India. welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. My name is Omar Tamsah. I'm 16 years of age. I'm in grade 11. I'm Canadian of Lebanese origin. MashaAllah, welcome to the show. Thank you. We'll quickly start into the topic, and again, like I said, it's to facilitate a discussion where we can uh, learn these skills, discuss, and then try to apply it in our lives. And it's not just for youth, but also for parents. I like to reiterate the fact that this show is about learning from you of how we can better develop these skills. So going back, uh, I, I want any of you to tell me what do you think of emotional self-control? What is it? Basically, emotional self-control, as I think, is one of the most important aspects for a person, for a human being. Because everything you do, like when you interact with the world, outer world, if you don't have emotional self-control, you will lose at every point. Like anger, we say. If you can't control your anger, and you, you expose yourself to the world, and then at a point of time, there's some argument maybe with your boss, or maybe with a teacher, or maybe with anyone. And maybe that, that, that ability that you can't control your anger will make it a bad effect, like you couldn't control your anger and you said something to your boss, maybe he fires you. And then you have lost everything. So gaining that emotional self-control on yourself is very important for us. How do we do it? Again, when we talk about emotional self-control, we re need to go back, back again to the foundations of our I team. Think, uh, From the Quran and Sunnah yeah, perspective. I think uh, uh, in a hadith of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the peace of my eyes is in salah. So I think practicing salah is uh, the best option for us Muslims. And also I think uh, add to that is the dua. I think they, they said when you are stressed, when you are, have some emotional disturbance, you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua. I think dua brings you closer to Allah and it helps you on those things that you're struggling with, especially in anger management, like you said, Salah. Now the science says that, you know, Salah gets your uh, blood pressure down, cools you down, only and only when you are actually applying those principles. So it's not just another physical worship, yeah, but it's but that is spiritual worship. You really practice Salah in its way, like you really do it from your heart. Not just like you go in a mosque and then True, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because Umar, you Salah giving, is uh, like like a wave it is a wave and then when you pray and your wave and the wave of the salah if it matches that's exactly when you're praying uh, Umar you were giving a hadith on uh, uh, yeah. anger uh, one of the sahaba uh, asked the rasul for advice uh, so rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told him don't be angry and he repeated it three times emphasizing on how important controlling your emotions would be. 
Mm -hmm. So this is just one aspect. This is anger management, like when we can call it. Like, you know, controlling your anger in terms of, you know, when you feel really frustrated, you go back again to the uh, dean. You uh, go back to, again, the foundation. Then what does the foundation say? Don't make your decision when you're angry. Yes. Cool down. Think. Because obviously you would go to a rash decision that in the long term may not be feasible. Yeah, true. And and that, that that's just one part. But what other examples do you think? In like uh, this one was the extreme. We took the anger, and on the other extreme, if you go like the person who is like totally calm, like like too much calm. He's like, too passive. Yeah. Like he's too mm. passive. Exactly. Your point. Like if uh, somebody steals his money, he's walking on the street, and somebody stole his money, and then instead of doing something about it that how it is you maybe catching him or something okay Allah obviously is <laughs> nobody would do that no I'm just giving an yeah, example yeah true of course but I think a better example would be a person for example in school a lot of people they're very passive in the way how in the way they deal with their studies or the way that uh, that occurrence happens to them hey you know what um, you might you might fail this year. yeah okay no problem Hey, there's a test tomorrow. Yeah, okay, no problem. They take it easy. Yeah, yeah, they they take take your mother is calling you. No, no problem. Yeah. But it, it, this is the emotional aspect. But, you know, we, when we're talking about emotional self-control, we're talking about those situations where you really need to control these emotions. And it is called emotional intelligence as well. You know, knowing when you need to act, yeah, when so you, you need, need to, to back off. Like balance yourself. I mean, if you look at the deen, in the deen, uh, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us those guidelines through the Prophet wasallam, that you know how we can do these things, so how we can control these emotions because you know sometimes when someone's dear passes away True, yes. you know and, and all the these emotions the come, sadness. the grief and you know there is a beautiful book I think uh, Don't Be Sad, do you know who, yes. who the author is? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's a very nice book and you know it talks about the same thing that you don't have to be sad when grief comes to you. Yes, sadness, we are human beings, will come to us. But then we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we actually pray, rather than crying for the person we pray. Exactly. I mean, when the Prophet sallallahu passed away, so many people started crying. It's natural. The Sahaba couldn't even get up and walk. Right? Yeah, but, uh, it's natural. But then you're overcoming that emotions. Sabr. Sabr. Yeah. The patience, because this is another aspect of a Muslim. And this is the guidelines that we take from our deen and apply it to become, uh, you know, enhance our skills in leadership. Again, that I think the point that we're coming back to is that we need to have a balance in our lives. We can't be too angry. Obviously, we have to show anger at the right times, the right perspective. And we can't be too passive. We need to show passivity at some times and we need to show anger at some times. Same thing goes for grief. Obviously, you need to grieve over something that you lost. But you can't grieve beyond a certain limit. You can't go, for example, people in certain parts of the world, they go hit themselves and they wail and they cry and they do all sorts of weird stuff just because somebody passed away. Yeah. It's a natural thing. Yes, we understand. It's, a, it's quite a big... But there are also guidelines to do that. And this is what emotional self-control uh, requires you to do. It's like in all aspects. See, Islam is a complete way of life. It tells you what to do when you're angry. It tells you what to do when you're in grief. It tells you when you're in a certain situation. But, you know, let's go back to the youth. and uh, uh, see Brother Rusin, yeah. uh, now, uh, previously you were talking about when the Prophet Wasallam died and how the Sahaba reacted. We can see that uh, although the Sahaba had hundreds of great acts, they are not perfect because yeah. Amr ibn al-Khattab, uh, due to his anger when the Prophet Sallallahu died, he said anyone who would say that the Prophet died, I would cut his head off. Yeah. And then, then he cooled down, subhanAllah, you know, like it tells you that uh, the, uh, not all the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like, you know, they, 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 they manage all aspects uh, of the deen, perhaps in a way which was different than how we can approach. But the guidelines are there. The Prophet so Basically, Salaam. we should ponder right now is how do we control it? Yes, how exactly. do we control that? Uh, I think for that you need to understand uh, uh, there, there is something called emotional intelligence which is basically looking at things in a different way and thinking that actually, you know, all these things are to happen. 
and how do we manage that situation will make us better leader true i had a situation once in which uh, a person in a, who came to our house as a guest uh, their one of their daughters it was 2 or 3 years old was playing with the doors and she got her hand stuck in the door and everybody became panicky and everybody was trying to do something to the door they screaming the mother is crying the grandmother is screaming people are trying to calm things down people are screaming at the end of the day the person who was most influential at the end was the person who took a step back got out of the mess analyzed the situation really thought about how the door works where is finger stuck and then finally applied that okay let's take all the emotions out let's go and actually get the girl out because when you're when you're upset when you're angry when you're um, panicky when you're panicky yeah you you don't know what to do you just you you whatever the first thing that comes to your brain that's what you do so maybe you, you take the wrong step you take the wrong step and you don't look at things from a bigger perspective yeah you know like when they say when um, uh, in certain first aid trainings they will say step back you know first assess the situation look at what's happening think before you yeah leave. think before you start uh, you know doing anything to the body or you know the person on on the ground the person who's injured you know first assess the situation see the environment and then go and take care of the situation you can't tackle the situation just as it comes and this is what emotional self control is you don't let your emotions take over and then you realize that you have done something even more horrible than what it was yes mm -hmm. you know and in such an uh, situations we see it all the time but there is another emotion you know how emotionally sometimes we can be really disturbed by you know video games for example i think in in youth you they're so attached to the video games or their um, uh, you know t uh, drama series that they will just involved in it so much that at the end they will perhaps miss salah addiction for those him yeah more important priorities yeah. like uh, even the movies like if there is some drama sad movie and if the guy or the girl he saw the movie and then he is depressed because of the, the movie for over. a week subhanallah yeah. yeah the effect of the movie the effect of the climax which was the in their, of in the, the movie, media basically really it was so much on the guy that's that he why was you can't put yourself in that position you should not put yourself in the position where you have the media affecting you on your daily life we will uh, talk more about it and we will take a short break and we'll be back so uh, don't go away and inshallah we'll be talking more about the topic that will impress you that you can really learn so many things that you can apply in your life to become better leaders so watch inshallah we'll be back soon look to the heavens hands spread wide thanking allah the most high there is no god but allah we can't just take knowledge and keep it as information we have to transfer it into action when he got up he said one thing asallam nas did the people pray in hajj for example the 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 primary example of how multiculturalism really looks like all equal i've got a dentist in canada even though he's ripping holes in my teeth He's got great akhlaq. I love visiting. Identify the issue. Analyze it. Challenge it. And then try again. Because if you fail, good deal. Try again and keep trying. to the heavens hands spread wide thanking allah the most high there is no god but allah assalamu alaikum rahmatullah welcome back once again to the episode of iteens world which is where we are talking about tell me the topic <laughs> we're talking about emotional self control what was yeah. emotional self control okay let's go we were just talking about emotional self control and um, uh, we were just discussing during the break about anger management and what are the solutions one of them was salah of course one is stepping back taking your time don't act 
hastily and make a decision or you know um, try to manage that important period where you can go in a, in a way where you can actually make it worse for yourself so do you have any ideas of what you think from your experience yes of course because uh, hadith and Quran are the two most important thing and I think you can find every thing like solution for everything inside it so in the hadith of Rasulullah he says when you're angry you and you're standing you sit down and if you still can't control you lie down. You lie down. Okay. And in another hadith, he says, when you're angry, and like, of course, you can't sit down and lie down at every place. Yeah. Say, min shaytani rajim three times. Because anger, these so emotions, yeah. when a human is being played with emotions, he should just get in his mind that shaytan is behind him. Yeah. Mashallah. That's very so good. Once, very good once, once he gets rid of shaytan, he is like a normal person again. So, looking at day to day, you know, what are the things that <laughs> perhaps trigger this anger among the youth that you feel but also one peers. thing that I noticed uh, from school and home you know, there was this boy in my school his parents at home right they abuse him in a kind of way where they put him down when actuality he's a person that likes to show himself they always put him down and humble himself so fine at the home he's okay but at the school he becomes a totally different person why because he, he needs to take out all the frustration that is built up inside of it at his home because his parents are so authoritative, authoritative and they do not know who he really is. So he takes out all the frustration on us, on the students, on the teachers, on, on his classmates. So he really becomes somebody really annoying. At the same time, there are people who become really frustrated in school. People are doing something, people are annoying them and bullying them and they won't react. But they will react it at home. And they would react it yeah, at home. Yeah. Exactly. So again, I think going back is like, how can you help and enhance uh, the skills? You know, for first, like, I think we should focus on the teenagers because I think uh, this frustration, stress, and anger, it uh, really depends upon the lifestyle the teenager or the student or the youth is leading. Like, mostly nowadays, teenagers, they sleep very late at night. Like, they work all day. They are busy and stuff, and then they are busy with some activities late night, and then they sleep very late. So what happens basically is they don't get the rest, the amount, the right amount of rest they need. So now their brain can't catch up with all the things. So there is internal frustration inside the human body. So when you're like pushed or blown with something like something serious happen, you get frustrated, like you blow out. Mm -hmm. but, but so I Wasim, think yeah. managing the teenage lifestyle is really important for them. Yeah, but but Wasim, that's what I was telling, that uh, you can't discuss. You the obviously the solution for this is discussing the problems with other people because you, you as a teenager may not know the solution for everything. Yes, but some things you can't exactly discuss with your parents. And who else? Where do you, where do you go to? The internet obviously is a quite a bad place for yeah mm -hmm. asking because some of the counseling that you perhaps would need would be not available on the internet as per se according to the guidelines of Islam, Islam exactly. you know like what what Islam says about how do you uh, manage these certain situations and I think you know it's going back again to uh, the, the getting the information from the scholars but there are our psychologists and others that perhaps can help in certain serious situations where you identify that it is really affecting your life your education, your relationships with your family. So it again depends on, and I think uh, parents, as parents, we need to be more vigilant of situations where we find that our, um, you know, child perhaps, or our, uh, you know, uh, other people in our circle are perhaps affected. And I can see sometimes situations where I, I can give you an example where um, I had some parents that, uh, you know, talked about their son who was basically. Um, just gets very upset if he or she does not get grades that are, for example, he wants all A's. So if he gets even one less mark, he will become, uh, he will become very violent and he will uh, start attacking and he will start breaking things just because he lost that one mark and he wanted... Maybe hunt. that's an effect of the childhood yeah, foundation exactly of that. I think it should be the effect of the parent. 
because uh, they are pressuring their children the to get uh, that uh, exactly and i think this is why the appreciation the of the yeah. exactly yeah, because you know and sometimes parents think it's a good thing our kid is doing really well he's doing very well in school but you don't understand how much of a pressure yes, the child yeah, is exactly. taking and then you know we're talking about emotional self control but how can the you know the, we don't give the child that capacity to understand what self control is like okay is this marks going to take you to heaven is this marks are linked to your success in this life at the end of the day the people should realize risk comes from allah yeah so i've personally seen people who have get got amazing grades at the end of the day they just become a slave of the system and another big corporation and other people who get horrible grades they become big business leaders and the other way around i'm not saying like exactly. you know they're uh, uh, taking things for granted yeah i think it's the it's the moderation in all what we do I mean if we are you know just aiming for grades it can be one of our goals but we do, we shouldn't let it affect our other goals which is the first goal is to making sure the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we act in our lives how much priority we give to the uh, you know the the things that we have to do in our deen to make sure that we are on the right path rather than just affect you know this is what happened when you go into inter- entertainment for example too much and then you forget about all the other things and you're just focused on one yeah thing. like like i think like most of the media like a major part of the media kills your emotions yeah. like even like i've seen guys or girls like who are into chatting what we call today too much into chatting like you see them like when a person like we me and you are talking like if i want to laugh if i'm happy i will express my laughter out in front of you and that's something i'm expressing my emotion and on the same hand a person a guy a teenage who is chatting like 24/7 and the person on the chat on the other side he said something funny now this guy he will send back an emoticon of a big smile but in reality he is just into, sitting like this yeah so that keeps your emotions inside that kills so, your emotions so this virtual communication uh, it's so really important it, it, it doesn't show the real emotion uh, sorry right? to interrupt i just yeah. have uh, two two points the first point is it's a really good tip it's really basic uh, before doing any actions is to just take a deep breath and count to three during that period just think about your actions uh, I'm talking from personal experience it yeah, has really making worked that out intention, you know, you, uh, your life is all about the pleasure of Allah like b- you uh, may- maybe you're talking with your parents and uh, they said something and it made you angry if you reply it's you're going to reply in an offensive way which is going to be uh this going to count as a sin exactly that's yeah. why if you take a deep breath and think about the situation then you can reply accordingly without disobeying your parents mm-hmm. and the second thing you were saying uh, i lost track of thought <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um I think Abdul Mateen we were just uh, discussing yeah, about the entertainment yes, exactly exactly you as uh, Atik was telling about entertainment it really kills your emotions also in a way when you become too not addicted. exactly entertainment like a sort of like getting attached to it too much exactly addiction yeah. and you become addicted to either uh, singers or people in the media yeah. whether it be actors games. or actresses and you become you, and I've yeah, seen people yeah. posting pictures of them on their walls on their Facebooks talking that's the only thing that they talk about that's the only thing that they live about come on man get a life i think yeah. like a solution to this could be like exposure or exploitation like yeah. like and nowadays you know, there the pe- the the children young people that have committed suicide for yeah. for celebrities person, yeah. for, yeah. for for yeah. for you know just listening to some songs and uh, you know subhanallah like you, you you just get amazed by how people can just go crazy on a on a on a celebrity and and especially we see this more in the muslim youth they're trying to adapt and and they have lost their self control basically this is what it is they have lo- lost that ability to control those emotions and you know that's how the drugs addiction comes yes, in place exactly. and you see it more and more in the muslim youth is because uh, you know they 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 basically are away from the Uh, Quran and Sunnah they basically away from that and they and I, I think you can relate more to it be in because of you have the access to the peers I mean I work with youth and I have met a lot of people in both Canada and here in UAE and I I can tell you that one of these things is because they're upset with the families they don't manage their emotion well so so they get they fall into this trap 
where they find, oh yeah, this is peace, this is where I should be. But really, when you talk to them, when they go into rehab, some of them, they really say that it, it was not what we were thinking, but just we got into it and yeah. we got addicted. Because of peer pressure. And peer everything. pressure and, you know... Uh, Maybe it is because I think it's a little tough situation, both for the parents and for the teenager, because uh, if, the, if the teenage, he exposes himself outside, like because nowadays you go and say to a teenage guy or a girl, like, come out, let's play. And then they say, no, I want to stay at home, I want to sleep. Or no, some show is going to come, I want to watch the show. So, like, they don't get out. They don't, like, experience the world outside. So once you go outside, and then you exp express your real emotions to the world. And that's when you realize, like, the emotion I'm expressing, at which place is it right or is it wrong. Yeah, again, I think, uh, I would like to end with this, that it is managing these emotions through the Quran and Sunnah. Because if you really follow it, and you follow those guidelines, you know, you will develop those relationships. Exactly. The okay. real relationship, it's not on the internet. It's, you know, we talked about in our previous episode certain things about um, making the charity and going to these people, empathy and sympathy. When we actually practice these skills, we become better in managing our emotions. So, like, we can recall now, like, all we have discussed, like, the best way for managing is uh, salah, first, most important, and then the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the tips he has given to us. And then the best part is changing your lifestyle. You should, like, at the end of the day, you should analyze yourself, like, how is your lifestyle? Is it good or is it bad? Like, if you just bring a little change in it, maybe it can have a great effect on your emotions. And Baduwa see, see, one of the most important things that I feel is that parents watching this show, they always think that whatever we're talking about, we're talking about some third person. They don't realize that their own children, teenagers, might be in this problem. However great they might be, they might think they may be in an Islamic perspective, their own children are living in the exact same world. So I hope that parents realize that, you know, it might be your own child because some t children of some very nice people have really surprised me in how the way that yeah, they the behave parents like not with pressure. Like the child says, I want to go out and hang out with friends and get some fresh air. And then the father or the mother is like, no, stay at home. You've got a lot of things to study. And then when the guy stays at home too much, like he goes out once or like two times in two months or three months. So he has basically killed his all emotions, and then and the parents blame the Let it be the drugs yeah. or the interaction with school networking. as well. Okay, um, thank you again. I think uh, you know the discussion was wonderful. I would like to thank you, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, once again for giving us the opportunity to discuss this important topic. I would really appreciate that you go back and look at this subject, try to see where you can get those skills. But again, it's very important to have that companionship. It's very important to have the people around you to guide you. It's for parents, it's for teachers, it's for students, it's for the youth to look around and find the right people, be with them. You will learn these skills and inshallah become better. Uh, we would like to conclude and I thank you all for being part thank of this discussion. And inshallah, we will see you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All you see is for you and I In your dreams, through the nights Every moment that passes by Look to the heavens, hands spread wide Thanking Allah the Most High There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger Look to the heavens, hands spread wide Thanking Allah the Most High There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger